Your aim is trash. It's garbage. It's doo doo caca. It's just really bad. Okay, so maybe it isn't, but like, you're the one who clicked on the video, right? It's literally titled, Five Reasons Why Your Aim Sucks. So why would you click on this if your aim doesn't suck? Are you just bored? Does my voice soothe you to sleep? Okay, but for whatever reason you decided to click on this video, people complain all the time that if they had better aim, they'd be immortal or radiant for sure. And it's funny because some of the best performing videos on YouTube about Valorant is probably usually about aim. And while aim really isn't the deciding factor as to why you're not a high rank, as things like game sends, utility usage, and communication are also extremely important, it is important, and your mechanical skill alone can carry you to any rank you want, really. Good aim, like anything else in life, is going to take dedication, practice, and patience. And without those, you're not going to have a good time. So today we're going over the five reasons why your aim might suck. So first and foremost, why aren't you warming up before you play? Hmm? You know you should do it, so why aren't you? You can put off your homework, that's one thing, but not warming up, shame on you. If you ask any decent athlete before they start exercising what they do before anything else, they're going to tell you that they warm up, and this really isn't rocket science. Steph Curry doesn't just hop out of his Lambo right before tip-off, get dressed, and immediately start drilling threes from half court. This guy has a whole routine that he goes through before every game, and you should too. Each Valorant Pro has their own form of warm-up. They can vary in time length, game modes, even games between Aimlabs and Kovacs. And with a quick internet search, you can find one that suits you, or you could pretty much just come up with one yourself. Personally, what I do is I just play several death matches, hop in the range and shoot some bots, and then I'm usually pretty good to go. That lasts me about 15 minutes. Haven't you ever played a deathmatch after you've played a few ranked games and your aim is just top notch? Like you're just bonking kids left and right and nobody can stop you. People are calling you a sweat and that you're a tryhard. Well, wouldn't it make sense that if you got like that before you played your ranked games? Come on, go do some warm-ups before you play. Just be careful that you don't warm up for too long. I've literally seen routines online that recommend that you warm up for an hour or even longer. Like that doesn't really even make sense. I mean, if you just want to chill out and try to work on your aim without playing any games, then that's fine, go for it. But if you're playing Kovacs or deathmatches or something for over an hour, then what you're doing is you're burning yourself out before the game even starts. Just do what's best for you, make sure you do it, and your aim should be crispy before you start playing. Okay, so remember how I said that aim isn't the only thing that'll get you to Immortal or Radiant? Well, that's true. So don't be that insta-locking, mouth-breathing, open-jaw-drooling Reyna that thinks that, and you should check out our website. We have Smurf commentaries where Radiant level players talk you through their games and show you how to play in higher ranked games effectively. They'll tell you all about game sends, map awareness, utility usage, and so much more. Or maybe if you wanted to learn how to run a default, a specific agent, or just how to get better, we can help you with that too. We have full courses tailored to all of those things. We also have a rank improvement guarantee, so if you don't see a rank improving, you'll get your money back. But there's literally so much value here, I find it hard that you want to improve. So if you're looking for the fastest way to climb in Valorant, be sure to check out skillcap.com, link in the description below. Next, I really want to talk about something that nobody seems to have, and that's patience. Let me give you an example. When you start talking to somebody that you like, you don't just ask them to marry you after day one. You gotta give that relationship some time. Go out to a movie, maybe dinner. Throw a couple stim beacons in there. Okay, okay, never mind, you get it. When you're aim training, it's the same thing. You're not gonna be the best in just a week. You're not gonna be tens. You're gonna be fives. Okay, that was really bad. Okay, okay, no more puns. I really, okay, all that aside, you need to consistently practice if you wanna get better and think about the long-term goal you're setting for yourself. And in between that long-term goal, you wanna set up short-term goals. Maybe you wanna hit a certain Kovac score or win a certain amount of death matches, or maybe even win a tournament. These things are going to take time and you need to keep that in mind that the more and more you practice, the closer you get to that goal. So if you play Kovacs for one hour and then you hop into your rank game and you don't drop 30, don't be discouraged. Things take time. All right, so now that that's out of the way, the next thing I wanna talk about is the fact that everyone I watch play Deathmatch seems to have a paperweight on their crouch key. So if you wanna get better, be sure to remove that paperweight off your crouch key if you wanna get better. No, but honestly, when you crouch, that makes you an easy target because you can't move if you miss. And be honest with yourself, you're not going to hit every shot so you should be prepared for when you do miss. And crouching opponents are the easiest to hit because good players are going to strafe, reset their spray, and tap you in the head because you're sitting there crouching and you can't move anywhere. There's a time and place to crouch spray, but not all the time. And if you learn how to strafe and reset your spray after you whiff, I promise you, you'll get a lot more kills. The thing crouching does for you is make your sprays tighter and much easier to control. So the few situations where you want to crouch and spray are going to be when you're trying to wall bang somebody, or maybe you just threw a flash out and you got four guys standing in front of you and they don't know where they're looking at and you just don't have the time to reset your spray, or you're trying to spray through a smoke maybe. Those are like some of the few times you should be crouch spraying. So if you're not doing that, then just don't crouch. If you have a major problem with crouching all the time, something I've seen people do literally is to unbind their crouch button until they break that habit. Many pros have done it too, so give it a try. 
And speaking of pressing keys while you're shooting, something people do a ton is that they move when they shoot. And it's something that people don't notice a ton. When they shoot, they think that their bullets are going around a person and they'll start blaming the gun that they're using or they'll think that ba Valorant is just a bad game. Well, no, that's not the case. It's just that you're still moving while you're shooting. You just don't notice it. The thing that I used to tell myself when I had this problem were the three S's, see, stop, and shoot. And I would do it until I was sure I was still before I shot. Like I would super over exaggerate it. I would come to a complete standstill, even if the guy wasn't looking at me, and then I would shoot him in the head. But eventually I would go faster and faster and I would get better at seeing, stopping, and shooting. And then once you get that down, you can start strafing a ton easier as you won't move while you're shooting. Next, let me ask you something. Why do you make everything so much harder for yourself? I know those flicky, fast, zoom, zoom clips look super cool, but you do realize those are extremely hard to reliably hit and you don't need to put yourself in those situations to hit those shots. What I'm talking about is positioning. And people don't really think about this when talking about aim. Let's take a look at this angle on bind. If you hold this angle to watch the push out from short, you need to realize that if the enemy has any amount of brain cells, they'll push from both shower and short from the same time, and you'll be exposed to a whole bunch of people all at once. But if you hold a safer angle like this, you'll be able to isolate your duels and not worry about having to making these ridiculous flicks across your screen. If you have good crosshair placement, I promise you that you'll be at least good for one. And then once you get that one, you go to the next one, and then the next one, and the next one. And while yes, this is a super simple example, this applies to every angle on the map. And based on the situation you're in and what you need to accomplish for your team, you need to keep this in mind. Also, another thing that can make your aim a ton better is the utility. Take a look at the bottom of your screen. You see those little green bars you got there with the keys label on them and stuff? Yeah, those things are there to make your life so much easier. Even in high elo lobbies, people don't seem to understand this. Smokes block off sight lines so you can focus on one angle at a time. Flashes do that too. Okay, this sounds super elementary, but I have to explain this in my immortal lobbies, so I guess I have to explain it here too. It seems like everybody forgets that their agents have abilities to make their lives easier, and they just run it down and try to take unfavorable aim duels constantly and then feed the enemy team. There's so much utility in this game that if you're a good player, you should know how to isolate players and take proper aim duels that favor you instead of them. Okay, so one last reason why your aim sucks is that you don't take your time with your shots. And this goes back to that flick fast clips I talked about. Yes, those are super cool, but at the same time, you need to take your time and make sure you're actually on your target. And this is something I used to struggle with too. To fix this, what I do is I'd go into the range, throw the bots up and take my time flicking my mouse across my screen and making sure my crosshair was over the bot's head before I took my shot. And when I say flicking, I don't mean fast. I would go in a timely manner and make sure that my crosshair is going over their head and then that's how you build up this muscle memory. And yes, it may look dumb, but it's where you have to start. And once you get faster and faster, you can go do this in DMs and then obviously this is gonna translate into your games. This is like everything else I talked about before. It's gonna take a lot of time and patience as you're not gonna get really good overnight. Rome wasn't built in a week or something right? I don't know. Just go practice and take your time with it. But this was all just one of the guide that we have in our website though. And once you finally get that aim down, come check out the website so we can help round out your gameplay. We also do VOD reviews for lucky subscribers if that's something you're interested in. We also have tons of Radiant Smurf commentaries where we have Radiant level players walking through exactly how to have the most impact possible in every game and they're super helpful to see in real time what goes to a top tier player's head. As you mentioned before, it's also backed by a rank improvement guarantee and the reason we do that is because we're just that confident that our service works. And if it doesn't work, then you shouldn't pay. So what are you waiting for? You've got nothing to lose. Head on over to skillcap.com and get started in your way to that rank that you deserve. So I hope this video helped you guys figure out why your aim needs a little bit of help. It can be frustrating to whiff after whiff, and now hopefully you can work out those kinks and go click on some heads. All it takes is a little hard work and perseverance, just like anything else in life. It's a grind. But if you just keep that end goal in mind, you'll be there in no time. I promise. As always, if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel down below. It really does help us out. And that's all for us. I'm Teets, and we here at Skullcap want to thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.